You might have noticed that sometimes AI slowly creeps into our lives and sometimes it makes a major leap forward quickly. Well, as of November 30th, 2022, ChatGPT exploded onto the scene and gained a million users in just five days. How many of you know what ChatGPT is? Artificial intelligence model developed by OpenAI. Someone may use it in a way that is bad. So what does this mean for blogging? Should we be scared of a google future where we ask the AI our deepest questions and instantly get answers? Or does it mean that we can now harness this technology for ourselves and build an online business better, faster, and more profitable than ever before. Well, in this video, I'm covering exactly how to start a blog with ChatGPT and AI in 2023. Let's get into it. So let's face it. AI just keeps getting smarter and smarter. That's basically how it works. It's called machine learning. It keeps learning and iterating and getting smarter and getting better and learning more things. And the pace is accelerating. We've seen that in just the last three months, everyone is talking about ChatGPT and AI. Now let's look at blogging and content creation before and after the advent of AI. So before AI, we did everything ourselves as humans. We did all of the keyword research ourselves. So we looked for keywords in Ahrefs and other tools. We found everything ourselves. We did the content planning. We created a content content calendar. We put all our keywords into a content plan. You know, there's editors and doing all of that stuff. And then there's content writing. So we wrote every word ourselves. There was a blank WordPress page and we wrote all the content. Content updating. We update our content in blog posts and articles over time. Humans did all of that too. Now this was blogging with some AI. So this was probably like a year ago or six months ago. This is where AI started to creep onto the scene. So keyword research, we mainly do this ourselves. So we would use tools like Ahrefs and exploding topics and Google Trends and Google Keyword Planner and find keywords for a blog to write about. And we didn't really get much help from AI. Content planning, same thing, humans. We would create the content plan, we would do that. Now AI started to help with content writing because you could use a tool like Surfer SEO that would tell you the specific keywords to put in your article, the semantic keywords that the human brain probably could never think of, those keywords you would wanna use in your blog posts. And then content updating was a mixture of human and AI. So you know we could rewrite a few paragraphs here and there with AI, but it was still mainly a human endeavor. Now, when we look at 2023, this is what it looks like. Everything can now be done with AI. So with blogging is changing from keyword research to content planning, to how fast you can produce content, to how you write it, to the whole system of blogging and how to make money with it is changing quickly before our eyes. So the question is, what does this mean for blogging? First, it means you have to be faster. Blogging is a great business model still with AI because if we can generate content faster and quicker, then it's a best business model to create more content, rank for more keywords and make more money. But we have to realize we want to stay on the cutting edge of this stuff. We can't be in the stone age writing one article a week while other sites are writing 100 articles a month. We have to be a little bit faster. We have to learn this stuff. But more importantly, it means that you have to master AI tools. So AI tools are only as strong as the person behind them, the prompts they're giving them, and then validating this data, making business decisions based on will this keyword make me money? Is this content going to pass content AI detection? Is it ranking for the right keywords or the right things in there? So there's still a human that has to be behind it that has good business sense and one that can master these AI tools to become even more powerful. So when we think about starting a blog in 2023, what does that look like? Well, starting a blog, it, you know, not a lot has changed when you think about starting a blog. Websites are still being created. Google search is still growing, even though there's people like, oh, chat GPT is going to take over and people are going to use Google less. That is not the case. Google is still the strongest you know, search engine out there. They have thousands of engineers. They have some of the most research and development of any company out there. And they're working on this stuff. They do, I, I will say they do have to become more innovative if they wanna survive. You know, They're kinda of getting a little bit complacent. But Google is not going anywhere. So starting a blog is basically the same as it has been. You start a blog the same way. You use WordPress. It's the best CMS, the best, um, platform for SEO and the easiest way to create blog posts, rank content and make money through affiliate marketing. There's also a theme, you pick a theme. I always recommend Cadence or Astra as an easy, simple, free WordPress theme to design your website with. Then you have your WordPress plugins, things like WP Rocket, Rank Math, uh, different image optimization ones like short pixel other plugins that you need and then you have certain settings you set up on your website and then you create what we call in blog growth engine your core four pages like really just the four pages any blog needs including home page something about you like your story and your background and then your blog template so what your blog posts actually look like and then your
your blog archive or your blog role where all your blog posts are stored. After that, we wanna talk about the content assembly line and link building machine, which I've talked about in other videos as well. So when we talk about blogging in 2023, it's a little more competitive. There's still tons of pockets of opportunity out there if you know what niches to go after. So not every piece of content's gonna rank. So we need a system to create a lot of it and get some wins along the way. And then we have a link building machine, which is, these are the two tracks that you're doing with blogging. You're creating content, so you're creating stuff on your own website, and then you're working with other blogs and trying to get backlinks. And you know, if you're interested in learning the exact content assembly line method, the link building machine, exactly how I create a profitable blogging business, how I make $400,000 a month, make sure to click the link in the description below and sign up for my free 60 minute masterclass. But the process itself of running a successful, profitable blogging business is changing. So really, like I said, it, it comes down to content and links, content and links, content and links. So how much content can you create? How many things can you rank for? How much money can be made with affiliate marketing with that? How many links can you get to build your authority? Those are still the metrics, but the system and processes for doing these things have changed with AI. So instead of back in maybe 2005 or even 2015, where you could get away with writing one or two articles every few weeks, or maybe you write like, three blog posts a month. The competition is now using AI tools, using writers and AI content specialists to improve and increase their content output, their content velocity. So maybe, you know, you have to think about creating a process and system to do things faster with AI. So fa AI is all about speed. It's condensing the time down to do things into a way that makes it much faster. So let's take a look at some of the examples here with how the content game changes with AI. So first we can now use AI for keyword ideas. So whereas you used to have to like find specific keywords with, you know, Google Trends, Ahrefs, look at search volume, look at difficulty, we can actually use AI a little bit earlier in our process to find, you know, and get suggested articles that we can write for a blog using AI. So for example, if you go to ChatGPT and you type in, give me 10 keyword ideas with high search volume and low competition related to drones. Let's say you're in that niche. Here, let's spit it right out here. Here are 10 keyword ideas with high search volume and low competition related to drones. Drones for beginners, cheap drones. And it even tells you this keyword has high... This is insanely uh, helpful because you can find specific keyword ideas now with ChatGPT and AI. It literally tells you, here's some keywords to go after. Now what you wanna do though, is not don't just take the AI's word for it. You would use a tool like Ahrefs on top of it, plug these in and see what the search volume is, what the difficulty looks like, but it's great for getting keyword ideas. And you can do this in any niche, give it a try, do some different prompts to come up with different keyword ideas. Now, another interesting thing that you can do when you come up with ideas for your blog is to use AI to blanket your niche and build topical authority. So when we think about blogging and covering lots of topics and ranking a lot of content, we have to really blanket the niche and we have to have topical authority, which means that we have to have a lot of articles in that specific area of expertise. For example, if you're writing about drones and you only have one article about drones, Google's not gonna think you have much authority there. But if you have 50 articles about drones and you write all kinds of different stuff and interlink between them, that's a lot more you know consistent in Google's eyes and you have topical authority. So you can use AI as well with a simple prompt to blanket the niche for topical authority. So you could type something in like, give me 10 article ideas to improve my topical authority for SEO, for high intensity interval training. So a fitness term, specific fitness niche we can see. So there's some interesting article ideas to improve your topical authority here, like the benefits of high intensity interval training, the science behind it, how to create the perfect workouts, the best workouts for beginners, the top mistakes to avoid, the role of this training in improving cardiovascular health, the list goes on and on. And this is like another one where you can not just use this for keyword ideas, but use it for entire article ideas as well to blanket your niche and come up with, if I was an expert in this area, what would my blog have? And it would have these articles. You can say, give me 20 articles or more. So this is another way where you can just ask, you know, chat GPT to give you ideas for articles to become an expert and a blogging expert in a certain niche topic. So after that, you know, keyword ideas, content topics, creating a content calendar with AI, then we can actually use AI to write the actual blog content itself, which I will cover shortly in depth. But after that, I want to cover using AI to create outreach messages. So when we're doing link building, how can we you know, send unique messages asking for guest posts, asking for links and things like that. So I tried typing in something like, create a funny email outreach message asking to write a guest post for their site in the software niche. And it came up with a specific outreach and it, gave you, you know, it gives you the exact thing. Hey there, my name is, and then it says your name, 
and I'm a software developer and writer who loves to share my knowledge and experience with others. I came across your website and was really impressed by the quality of your content. I'm reaching out to think your readers would love this, yada, yada, yada. You're probably bombarded with requests for guest posts. Then I said, make it funnier and ruder, which actually worked yesterday, but now the AI is saying, I'm sorry, but I can't do this. It's important to maintain a professional and respectful tone in business, which is kind of weird. It's not letting me be rude in my email. I'm just trying to create a funny email. So there's some interesting, you know, I don't know who's feeding this AI, but there's some, there's definitely some interesting things to think about when it comes to policing this, what kind of political messages are allowed, what kind of harmful messages are allowed. But anyways, I just said, make it funnier. So then it says, I hope this email came, you know, hope this email finds you well. Then there's some kind of funnier stuff. Now I know what you're thinking. Who is this person? Why should I trust them to write for my website? Well, fear not, yada, yada, yada. So what do you say? I'm interested in adding a little humor to your site. So you can keep feeding it and you say, make it funnier again. And you can just keep making it weirder, funnier, different, more professional, less professional, different tone. You can use like the ADA framework to write certain sales messages. So you can use this for all types of different messages that can help your email outreach. So after outreach messages, we can also use AI to update our content. So this is almost like the easiest one, you know, write 500 more words about this or that. I'll cover that in more in depth as well. And then we also can use AI to make money with content. So for example, I tried typing in, give me 10 article ideas based on finance list posts that could make a lot of affiliate revenue. The articles should be for new products. So you could do this in any niche, but this is pretty interesting. This gives you a lot of kind of interesting articles that you could write and, write and make money with that don't look too competitive or crazy. Like some of them will be, but some of them look kind of new and interesting. So best personal finance apps, investment platforms, credit cards, reward programs, high yield savings accounts, robo advisors, online stockbrokers, peer to peer lending sites, mortgage lenders, life insurance, retirement plan options. So some of these are gonna be really competitive, but some of them won't be. And you can just keep feeding this thing and asking for affiliate opportunities in your niche for new products, because it's all about in blogging to rank for content. Again, it's all about finding the new and emerging products. It's hard to rank for stuff if it's been around for 10 or 15 years and all the sites are dominated by media sites. The key is to find new and emerging product list posts that you can write in your niche that aren't so competitive yet. So you can validate these in Ahrefs, look at the keyword difficulty, see which sites are ranking on page one. And if you find that lower DR, lower domain rating sites are ranking on the first page of Google, that's a good sign you can too, because it's all about authority and helpful content. But yeah, this is another interesting thing you can do to actually use AI to learn how to make money with affiliate marketing. So those are just a few ways to use AI before even writing your blog post. Now, when you think about it, the ultimate goal here is to use AI to speed up content production by 10x. We all have different content production systems, ways that we write content for blogs. But if you can speed this up and create your own system, that is the ultimate goal. It's creating high quality content for human beings with the help of AI faster. Now let's look at your blog's AI content plan. So first we can do, you know, do keyword research, not just with Ahrefs, but maybe with ChatGPT now. Try to find new article ideas and keywords that can both make you money and you can rank for. Then you create a content plan every month with a set number of articles. I like to do content planning monthly because things change pretty quickly. Uh, it's good like every month to kind of review. So right now on my blog, I don't use any AI yet. You know, we have human writers, and we do about 30 blog posts a month and we do some updates as well. But we do it every 30 days because like you don't know, maybe you know a month later you might say, hey, you know, we're losing a little bit of ground in this niche area, this sub niche, we need more topical authority here. Let's change the content plan a little bit. So you wanna be ahead of it, so plan ahead, but not too far ahead where you have like six months of content, you're, you're steering, it's like steering the Titanic in the wrong direction. So you wanna be able to move and shift and pivot quickly and planning content every month can help you do that. And that's both transactional posts to make affiliate revenue, the best of list posts, best credit cards, best laptop, things that are on product list posts that make affiliate revenue that people will click your affiliate links and buy stuff with that can make you the most money. And then informational posts to improve your topical authority and get traffic. And you can do this in a certain ratio. Now with AI, it's actually easier to blanket more informational content. So we could do like 70% informational and 30% transactional cover the entire niche, be as helpful as possible with your blog or 50, 50, whatever works. Every niche is a little bit different. You don't need, if you, the main goal here is to rank high value transactional posts. So some niches, sub niches, you might only need a few informational pieces of content surrounding that. Like for example, I could rank for something like transcription software, but I don't need to write 20 articles about transcription software. I could just write a few. Whereas if I'm writing about web hosting, the best web hosting providers, I probably need like 50 articles about web hosting to stand a chance of ranking. So it's always a different 
ratio depending on the niche, but you wanna have both and you wanna stack rank and create a content plan with the help of AI and Ahrefs. And then you create a process for creating this content at scale. You create your own process. That's a process for creating titles, creating the blog post content, which we're about to cover, creating headings like your H2 headings, H3 headings, how to actually organize and structure this the way that Google likes, and then a quick way of adding images. So ultimately, we also wanna use AI to update articles and add more content blocks, and that's really easy. And then ultimately what we wanna do is rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, improve your speed, quality, and efficiency. If you can create high quality content with AI and with tools at your disposal, then you should publish as quickly as you and comfortably as you can. So we all have full-time jobs typically when we start a blog. So if we have a couple hours in the day, blogging is all about maximizing the effective use of your time. Blogging is kind of complicated in that way, not complicated, but it's often dif uh, difficult for new bloggers to know what do I actually focus on on a day-to-day -day basis? Like right now I'm sitting at my computer, I have two hours or three hours after work to do something. What should I actually do? Basically what you wanna do is publish content as quickly as you can, quality content, and do link building. So the goal here is to improve speed, quality, and efficiency with the use of these tools. So now let's talk about your blog's AI tech stack. Now you don't need every single tool on this list, but I'm gonna give you some that are definitely you want and some that are optional, and then we'll go from there. So first, ChatGPT. You can use it for free. It can help you with everything from keyword research to helping you write the content and everything. That's one that we discussed. It's only getting smarter. It's on, you know, December, you know, there's a certain versions and it keeps getting updated and updated. So this tool could be completely different and smarter in a year and it can do a lot more things, but that's one to use. Surfer SEO. So this one I think is required and in our, our blog growth engine community, and our blog coaches, we all use it. And it's it's really, you know, the best way to rank content because it gives you specifically the semantic keywords, looks at the competition, what headings to use. So when you're optimizing your actual article, that's what it does. Grammarly is also required. You can use a free version, but just fix your spelling and punctuation errors. Um, fix your, you know, it fixes sentence structure. So red, if it red lines something, that's like a actual error that you need to fix. If it blue lines something, that could mean like you're using passive voice or the sentence is off and you can just quickly fix it. I'll show you that stuff. Jasper can also be good. So Jasper is another AI tool that you can use and you can give it, it has a thing called boss mode where you can give it exactly what you want it to write and it can give you an entire blog post. You're like, here's the keyword, here's the, t the, t the topic uh, and title of the blog post, here's a few sentences about what it should be and it'll spit out an entire article for you. That's another good one. I'll also show you how to use chat GPT with Jasper in a second. There's also originality.ai or writer.com's AI content detector. So origina originality.ai, you can paste your content into that and it will tell you, does it pass AI content detection? Is this written by a human? Is it written by AI? And it can tell the difference. So if this can tell the difference, if a small tool can tell the difference, you know Google can tell the difference. And Google does not like AI content. They said that they are gonna reward human content. So the big key here is using these tools in a way that can bypass AI content detection and is written good for human beings. That's the ultimate goal. And then we can talk about Dolly 2, which is the image generator. So this one's really cool, similar to ChatGPT, but you just put in prompts for images and then it comes up with that. And again, it's as strong as the prompts you can use. Like you can say things like, uh, create an image of this, comma, digital art, or create this like Van a Van Gogh painting or like pop art, and it'll do all kinds of different things based on the prompts that you put in. So this can be good for things like blog post images or just coming up with unique images on your own. It can even do sometimes blog post featured images. What I actually recommend for that is something like Canva, where you have a set template for your blog post featured image, and then you can just port in different images, change the text, and you're done pretty quickly. And then there's Content at Scale. This is a new company that kind of is built on top of ChatGPT and these other tools. And what you can do, I'll show you this as well, you can just input you know, certain pieces of content and then it creates an entire article for you. And their big uh, driving factor here is that they can bypass the AI content detector. So that's the whole like selling point is, you can use all these tools, but can it bypass AI content detection? Because at the end of the day, if it can't, it's probably not gonna rank. So the key is finding tools that can do that. So let me go through two main ways of creating AI content. So let's cover the first way to create AI content for your blog, and that's trying to use ChatGPT uh, and some other tools to create this content and see if we can make it work. So I put in something like, write a 1500 word blog post to rank the keyword best AI chatbots. The title for this post is this, and include ChatGPT number one on the list. What's interesting is you'll get a different version every time you feed this tool. And what it does is it starts writing and you can see it's writing an intro that's pretty good. It's covering what you're gonna cover in this blog post. And then it does, like I said, and it adds chat GPT number one to the list. So we can see 
we can go down and chat GPT is not unlimited. So it won't actually write 1500 words in one prompt. It usually stops at around 500 or 600 words. I'm not sure of the exact word limit. Now you can see that it stopped here. So I'm just gonna hit the word continue. So now you can see it, it had added a conclusion and it ended the article. This is probably about five, six, seven hundred words or so. So not probably not long enough. But you could also add something like add a section on how to use. I'm going to put it in quotes. How to use AI chatbots and an FAQ. And then you can say that. Now I can add more content for the middle of the article. You know, here are some steps to use an AI to follow when using a chatbot. So it's going to keep giving you stuff. And you can say write it, make it friendly, or change the tone. You can even you know add an entire blog post of your own and say write it in the style and tone of this blog post. So you can do a lot of things. And there's people on Twitter and there's people in videos that say I found the perfect Chat GPT prompt. It passes uh, these content detectors and works, but then it keeps changing. It's a little bit unpredictable, so it's hard to know exactly what to do with Chat GPT on its own to pass the uh, human test. But let's just say we want to copy this into Grammarly, and then we can do what we call the I like to call the Grammarly lightning round. And what it does is you see the overall score is 79. So we can go to the correctness errors and we can just start clicking away. We keep clicking, we keep clicking. We fix all these errors, we fix all these errors. All right, so we got the overall score in Grammarly to a 95 by just clicking a bunch of buttons like 50 times. Writing is a thing of the past, let's face it. It's just prompting stuff, clicking buttons, and copying and pasting. If you have good fingers and you can copy and paste, you can be good at this, but okay. So let's take this, let's copy it, and let's see what happens if I put it into originality.ai. Is it gonna detect that it's written by AI or is it gonna think that it's written by a human? So as you can see, it is detecting this as 90% AI, which is not very good. So I think if I pasted this into my WordPress blog, it probably wouldn't rank because it's all AI. Instead of putting it right into originality.ai because it's 90% AI, we put it into Jasper. And in Jasper, what we can do is we can take sentences and paragraphs and we can rephrase them. So I'm gonna click rephrase. Let's see what happens if I rephrase all the paragraphs. Can it pass AI content detection? Okay, so I rephrased about 90% of the sentences. Let's do a new scan and see what happens. All right, so it's a little bit better. It's at 76% original, 24% AI. That's actually pretty good, but I, I don't really feel comfortable at 76. That's a C, that's like my college grades. I think it should be better. So when we do this, when we use ChatGPT and we feed it our own stuff and we use free tools and then we use, we can even put it into Jasper. We could give it even different tones, like make it witty, make it this, make it that, add more exclamation points, do that. We can put it into Surfer SEO. We can, you know, paste it in here. Then the Surfer score has to be fixed as well because ChatGPT is not trained to automatically optimize this for SEO. Now I can use prompts that say make it good for SEO, but it's not quite there yet where it's just going to automatically get like a 90 or an 80 surfer score. So then this requires a lot of editing as well. And then we, if we can take all that, we can you know make sure that it passes AI content detection, gets to 90%, then we use a surfer, then we paste it into WordPress. It's kind of a lot of work at that point because it's almost easier just to hire a human writer and you know this stuff can help and speed things up for specific paragraphs but sometimes it's a little bit difficult just with chat gpt prompts so let's try another way to do this with content at scale so content at scale is a company that's built on top of chat gpt and these other tools and it's kind of simple you put different you put your title in you put your main keyword in you add a sentence or two and then it gives you it takes like maybe five to ten minutes but it gives you a lot better of a version of what you actually want. So like I told it to make uh, an article for this, best AI chatbot. It gives you the URL slug and a meta description already. Uh, it automatically, I said, do, make it between two and 3000 words. Um, it gives it headings. It gives it an actual table of contents, which is important. It, you know, this is interesting. It's not perfect, you know, cause it says this twice. I could like remove that. It requires a little bit of editing, puts some different things in here that you can change, like you can remove this. So it's not perfect. However, it is a lot better. And if I take this and I copy it, and you can see like we can, it has this kind of surfery integration in here where it tells you the on-page SEO checklist. But if I put this one into originality, let's see what actually happens. Uh, writing is so hard.
So this one is automatically 78% original, 22% AI. So I would want it to be 90%. Now this is the best we've done. It actually took me like two minutes rather than doing all of this copy and pasting. So it's definitely better as a tool than using ChatGPT by itself to create content. But we're still at the infancy of these tools and using them and creating different features. Like the main feature for this tool is like, make sure the grammar's good, make sure it has good surfer scores, but ultimately make sure that it, the AI uses AI to pass AI detection. Please share below if you know specific prompts that you like using for blog posts, that could be helpful as well. And there could be some out there that really do a good job and pass AI content detection. Like I've tried things like write an article and that bypasses AI content detection for this keyword that's optimized for SEO and all these things. So it will get smarter. It will get to a point where you can probably use ChatGPT by itself to write articles that are fine and you can copy and paste them into your site. But that's why these other extension tools exist, like Content at Scale. So if you're interested in Content at Scale, make sure to click the link in the description below. I actually have a link for them. So ultimately what you need is this. You need to know how to master the AI tools and you need, if you're gonna hire a writer for your blog or learn how to do this yourself, you need what's now considered a new job and that is something like an AI content specialist. Someone that goes into Content at Scale, puts in your prompts, puts in these things, and can create articles. So now, instead of having a writer that takes, you know, one to two to three hours, maybe four hours to write a blog post for you, and used, people used to charge by the word, which doesn't make sense anymore because I'm not paying for a bunch of words that were spewed out in five seconds, you can now hire somebody like an AI content specialist that is masters things like content at scale on ChatGPT to write articles and update stuff. So that's what we're gonna start doing is we have our regular human writer and then we're gonna have another human that is a AI content specialist that is you know responsible for 30 to 50 articles a month using these tools but making them really good and helpful for human beings. And we're finishing posts in under an hour now. So we could do eight articles a day and if you have a team, you can scale this thing out. There will be tools potentially in like three to six months even that can take all of this data and compile it into one thing where you add your keyword, add what it's about, and it spits out a helpful human, you know, error-free content article that you can use on your site. Now, this is kind of where the future of content is heading, but we really have to be smarter than everyone else. So to be best, you have to be smarter. That means doing everything to future-proof future, future -proof your site. So we can't just spam a bunch of AI content on a blog and think that we're gonna rank for everything. Create 100 articles a month or 200 articles a month that, that are written by AI, and we think that's gonna work because AI, Google uses AI and they, you know, it's gonna not, it's not gonna pass that AI content detector. So we have to know how to use these tools effectively. And ultimately we have to know how to write for human beings still. And that means making your AI content not look like AI. It means creating the best helpful content possible that is actually good for human beings, covers the topic specifically and is written uniquely. And that's where like people's unique takes have to be included in blog posts. That's kind of back to the helpful content update that Google created. If you're just taking stuff from the web and compiling it and putting it in your own website, then what are you contributing to society or to the conversation? Nothing really. So Google loves when you provide your own unique take on things. So did you use the tool that you're talking about? Do you have experience in how to do the thing that you're teaching? What is your own unique take? What is your own unique experience as a human being, not as a robot? So when we think about AI and blogging and starting a blog, in 2023, we have to realize that we are still at the very early stages of this AI technology, and it's only gonna keep getting smarter and easier to use. And blogging, to me, it's still the best business model that can harness the power of this AI. So if we can learn how to use this effectively for the written word, we can make more money actually than ever before because we can create more content, find new niche product opportunities, find affiliate opportunities, and make money with them. And to me, blogging is still the best business model to harness the power of AI. Because yes, the written word writing is becoming obsolete in this world, but creating monetizable content is not, like we showed with finding affiliate opportunities, like writing and dominating your niche. There are so many niches out there like that aren't that competitive. Things in the outdoor space, like hiking, fishing, kayaking. If you look at Amazon and you think of products that you wanna write about, and you give ChatGPT, like give me some affiliate articles in my niche related to this. There are tons of low competition opportunities. You validate with Ahrefs and you start ranking lots of content quickly. So it's all about scaling the processes, but learning how to har harness the power of AI to do that. Now, while AI is the most powerful tool of all tools, it is still just that. It's a simple tool in your belt. It needs to be fed the right prompts, the right validation with other tools and the right helpful human focused content. And you need to act fearlessly to stay on the cutting edge. So 
you could fear this stuff and be like, oh, everything's gonna be penalized. I might as well not use these tools at all. Or some people did that with link building. I'm not gonna try link building because I'm just gonna get penalized anyways and it's not gonna work and all of that. Well, guess what? There's a net, there's always a net positive to trying these things. You're not gonna get penalized and degraded completely across your entire site for a lot of this stuff. You might hit a baseline that's where you should be, but you need to act fearlessly and be on the cutting edge. If you're gonna be running a content business, whether it's a blog or a YouTube channel, you need to be on the cutting edge and use the latest tools at your disposal before other people do. And the best time to act on this is now. So if you're interested in learning more, how to start a profitable blogging business, a content-driven business, how I make $400,000 a month, click the link in the description below, sign up for my free 60-minute masterclass, and let me know what you think. You know, We're still at the infancy of this AI stuff. Please share anything that you're finding with ChatGPT. Are you using other tools? How many uh, posts are you publishing every month? You know, let's share, let's collaborate, let's figure this stuff out. Please like the video, subscribe to my channel for other videos on blogging, affiliate marketing, and all of that stuff, and I will see you in the next video.